Woohoohoo! All right, I think I'll look a little bit more dapper for this video. Let's get into it. So today's episode, not only am I gonna take you guys on my very first interview, tell you how it went, but also give you a few things that I've learned in the past few months of applying and learning how that process goes. And hopefully in future videos, I can give more tips and advice as things work out in my favor and possibly probably won't as well. To be honest, aside from asking other people who have been in my shoes, couldn't really find anything on the internet or on YouTube of how people go about finding their very first job. So hopefully this video and the series of me trying to find my first job helps you guys out on your own journey once you get to this point. So if you guys are excited for the series and want more episodes like this in the future, go ahead and make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to be notified when new videos like this go out. The interview today is at 10 o'clock in the morning, as you guys can see, eventually. It is at 9.20 currently, so I have a little bit of time to kind of explain what my goal is, what type of job I'm applying for, and what that process looks like. And at the very end of the video, I'll kind of give you some tips that I've learned throughout the process. So for those of you guys that are not familiar with me or the channel, my name is Laksh. I'm an internal medicine resident. I'm currently my third and last year of internal medicine residency. I'm currently in Dallas, Texas, where I've been for both for medical school and also for residency for now, I guess almost the last seven years. And I'm looking forward to going back home where my wife and I are currently from central Texas, like the Austin area. And that is the job positions that we're looking for. So I'm looking for a job as a hospitalist, which is basically a medicine doctor, an internal medicine doctor inside a hospital that pretty much just admits all kinds of things. And that job will vary depending on where you work, what hospitals, what group you work for. And so that's a good segue for today's interview, which is with one of those hospitals groups in Austin that works at a variety of their hospitals um, and basically fills them in with the hospitals that they hire. Now, obviously this is my very first interview, so I'm just really not sure how this process is gonna go, whether it'd be really easy to get a job or pretty difficult, or also what questions are appropriate, what kind of things that they will be upfront about, like salaries and work schedules and how much of those will be true and how much of that differs from company to company or hospital to hospital. Now, as I mentioned, I am very early on in the process with this being my very first interview, so I am a little bit nervous because frankly, I just don't know how this process is gonna work out. Is it gonna work my favor? Are things gonna go really well? Are things going to be a little bit confusing? And so to help me prepare for today, as well as future interviews, the first thing that I did is look at any med student's favorite resource, Reddit. Now initially it felt silly to go to the internet to ask what to do on my first interviews, but honestly many of those questions are really helpful. I've created a list of those for today's interview and hopefully I will share a few of those after the interview and just kind of show which ones are the things that they shared independently of me asking and which things I found to be really helpful for my own understanding. <laughs> but without further ado, I am going to try to get rid of some of that anxiety with some caffeine, which seems counterintuitive, and wish me luck on this interview. Now, the funny part about this is that the reason I'm dressed up is that it was originally supposed to be a Zoom interview, and I had to change it with their CEO to be uh, a phone interview, which is completely fine. But now, maybe I feel a little more professional, and this feels more appropriate for today's episode. So if I look good, maybe just hit a like on this button, or if you're listening on a podcast, go ahead and consider following and subscribing, um, and I promise you, I look better than I normally do if you're, not, if you're just listening to this on audio form. But wish me luck, and I will maybe try to show a clip of me on the interview as long as there's no confidential information. And at the very end of today's episode, I'll share a few tips that I've gotten along the way, as well as questions that I asked, and obviously share how today's interview went. So wish me luck. All right, so we are now roughly about six minutes away. I feel the nerves kicking in. I want to say it's a little bit of the coffee, um, but almost, almost there. Yeah, it's, uh, hey, it's Lux. How are you doing? Your, the, your group is a little bit unique on how you guys do things and so I guess I'm curious on um, what those are. I was reading your, your message on your website um, of kind of y'all's values and how it's different and obviously focus on patient care um, and not letting other, I guess, <laughs> bureaucratic things is a good way to say it, to get in that way. but. I'd love to learn more. All right, so just finished my first interview. Let's talk about how it went. So that was definitely an interesting experience. I felt like both sides felt in control. I also will say that this is kind of a, an interview in multiple phases. It's like a phone interview, and eventually they asked me if I would be interested in coming in person and talking with them. So I guess you can call it kind of an initial introduction with a more formal interview coming up. But regardless, still dress nicely. But let's just kind of talk about 
how this went. Now, like I mentioned, I'm applying for a hospital's position in Central Texas, and uh, this is one of the groups that works there. And the first part of the interview is really them just kind of discussing how they work, how they're unique, where they work, um, and what life may be like as a doctor in their group, how many patients you take care of. And some of those were also me just finding opportunities to ask questions uh, where I found them. So what they brought up a few interesting parts about like why they're unique, I kind of asked about how that works, how their doctors like them, things like schedules and how many patients I take care of or things of questions that I asked, um, as well as just kind of things like basic compensation. How do you pay your doctors? Um, what the ranges may be like, as well as what kind of benefits um, somebody may have, health insurance, life insurance, all that stuff, um, just so you kind of know. And then finally, the most importantly is schedule. Like how often will I be working? Where would I be working? How do I alternate between possible different hospitals? So there's a lot out of there and I wrote those questions down. Um, I think overall the interview or phone conversation went really well. It was really helpful. I understood kind of what they valued. They understood what I valued. Um, and like I said, we'll try to set up <laughs> something in person in the next couple uh, of weeks to months, just because we're in the kind of the Christmas holiday time as the making of this video. Um, but nonetheless, let me just kind of talk about now for the rest of this episode of what type of things that I've learned in this process that may be important for you to get your first interview and then how to conduct your first interview. Not that I'm saying that I'm an expert. I've literally just had it on this video, um, but hopefully this gives you guys some ideas. Now, the first thing I would say, and I learned this from experience, is typically the best way to find a job is to use your network of who you know. So I first thought I could just go to all the job openings on Google or like indeed.com or all the other recruiting websites and find my future job there. One of the things I learned really quickly is as those jobs that you find on like a job posting website is one, they may not be available and somebody just may not have taken the original job posting down. Two, they may not ever have been available and I'll get to that in a second. And then three, the quality of the job, if you see it having gone to a job recruiting website may just not be the highest quality position and so you have to be aware of them. Now getting to number two is that the job may have never been open Keep in mind that just like any business, people want as many contacts as possible to possibly be able to reach out for future business. And in this setting, if you are hiring doctors to make your own company money, you wanna have a nice influx of doctors and contacts of doctors at all times. And so sometimes, and unfortunately, there will be recruiters who are just trying to get as many email addresses and contact information from upcoming residents who are about to graduate like myself, as well as positions who are already in the market that are transitioning and put on job postings that may not be the most kind of accurate posting, we'll say, but they'll get their resume, they'll get their phone numbers, they'll get their emails, and then they can use that to contact that physician about other positions in the area or within the group. And so keep in mind that a job posting website may not be the best place to look for a job, and actually the best place that I've found to get some of the positions and contacts that I've now had are just the contacts that I own. So whether it's my residency director telling me like these are the people I know, as well as people that I've worked with in the central Texas areas. So when I was in med school, I did a rotation back near home. So I just reached out to the attending there like, do you have any contacts? And he gave me a few names, as well as friends who are in residency in the central Texas area asking of who they may know. So using your contacts to contact other people to eventually contact the person you mainly want to contact, um, and then sending your resumes to the appropriate people. I found that that has led to more conversations. Now keep in mind, I'm still pretty early in this process. I may just still not be doing it effectively, or I may should be doing more networking. Uh, but I am trying to use all the favors that I've now acquired over the past few years of saying, hey, I've helped you with X, Y, and Z. Can you return the favor um, and possibly put me in touch with so-and-so? Now, tip number two is to really have kind of a thought process of what you want out of a future job and what kind of questions you should ask to then be able to understand what you want. So obviously we talk about things like salaries, how much you'll be get paid, where you'll be working, how often you'll be working. Those are good questions to ask, despite if you're going into internal medicine or completely different like surgery, but it may be useful to use websites like Reddit or using your networks of saying, okay, like what do you value? So one of the things that I've recently done is a lot of my colleagues in residency that graduated a year before me may be working as hospitals at the current places that I'm doing residency at. And I just ask like, what type of things do you wish you had asked or did you actually ask and actually enjoy the answer for. So that may just include like, how do you get paid? Like what is the revenue structure? Some people do it based off productivity. Some people give you a base salary and then there's bonuses based off of productivity. Some people want to know like, how often do I work? Like do I have to work nights as an internal medicine doctor? Some of the hospitals here, you're required to work one weekend nights during a month and you just have to figure out when that's gonna be. Um, some just don't require that because they already have other doctors who fill in those roles. And so that's important to know if you value it. Um, other things are like, do you have nurse practitioners and PAs working under you that you have to supervise? Do you have to sign their notes? Do you have to see their patients? A lot of other little small nuances. And some of the other things that I really enjoyed are things like benefits. So like, do I get a 401k? Do I get malpractice? Do 
you possibly let doctors buy into your group? Um, as well as other questions that I wrote down, including do I get vacations um, or is my schedule as a hospitalist, which is typically seven days of work, seven days off, and then repeat the process. Is that what counts as my vacation time? Um, other things that I wrote down are like what EMRs or medical record systems they use, because some of them are just absolutely crap and some of them are just so easy to use, which can make a difference on how easy and looking forward you are to going to work if it's like just easy to do your job. Um, those are the main things that I kind of wrote down. If you guys have any other questions about like what other questions I've asked on my interviews, happy to answer them um, in the comments down below. Finally, tip number three at this process is to just take it easy on yourself and not to be stressed of needing a job. Now, I've started this process to give you a time frame and the November, December time before I'm about to graduate. So I still have six to seven months upcoming to actually find and formalize a job position. Now, ideally, I would want a job just like now, so then the rest of the residency is so much easier. But I do want the best job and the best fit for myself as well as a future company that may allow me to work for them. So um, taking you know, your time to ask these questions, to really compare and contrast different groups, asking questions of the hospitals um, as well as the doctors that may work within that group or for that hospital and saying like, how do you like this? What are things you don't like? And then asking yourself if those like cons are truly deal breakers. Those are a lot of things that are involved, but ultimately your first job tends not to be your forever job unless you do it correctly. And so the best way to do it is to do as much research as possible, ask as many questions as possible, um, and possibly just document your journey for yourself. And so right now I am creating, um, I will share my screen. So I unfortunately have to blur this obviously because I just don't want to um, give away like what company and what group I just interviewed with, but it is important to just show that I had questions written here that I'm kind of keeping tabs of, and I'm gonna move this ultimately to an Excel sheet um, but doing it in sticky notes and having your questions that you ask and then typing things as they give you more information is perfectly fine. And I can use this to compare and contrast when it's then time to make an ultimate decision and ideally sign a contract. But that, guys, was my very first interview as a full-time physician position. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this was helpful. If you guys do want me to continue to share this journey, to share future interviews and experiences, how things are going, and want this to actually be a series, then let me know in the comments down below if you're watching this on YouTube. Make sure you hit that like button because it tells me that you guys enjoy it, so like, please make it more lux. Um, and if you are not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you are subscribed, but you aren't hitting the notification bell, you may miss the video in the future, and who knows, make like lose your future job. So like, hit that notification bell as well. Now, if you're listening to this in an audio form on the form of a podcast, and definitely consider hitting that subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast listening platform. Definitely leave an honest review on iTunes if that's where you're listening. Um, but as always, my friends, drop your comments down below. Thank you for making it to the very end of this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys on yours. If you did enjoy this journey, then check out this video on how to use Anki to help you study to eventually do so well in med school that you can end up in my position, as well as this one on how to study in med school step-by-step.